Hey everybody, um, getting a couple questions about the mole and uh, just kind of understanding the concept in general. So I um, wanted to make kind of a clarifying video, hopefully, <laughs> uh, for you, okay? So um, first, just to make sure everyone understands, uh, the mole is the actual unit, okay? And we'll talk about what that means in just a second, but the way we abbreviate the mole is M-O-L, okay? We save ourselves so much time by just not writing out that E at the end. I don't know. Okay, scientists, we like to uh, abbreviate as much as possible. So one letter less is good. Um, so just if you're looking up, please don't get confused if you're like, you know, what if they misspell it or these guys are morons or whatever. No, the actual abbreviation for mole is mole, okay? Um, right, like, the abbreviation for gram is G. This makes sense, abbreviation. Okay, so just so you understand, this is our little abbreviation. And um, I've been trying to think of a, of a different way to describe the mole, and the way I like to think about it is really just, it's the central unit, okay? So the mole is the central unit for all of your chem stuff, okay? So um, no matter what unit you start in, you're going to want to convert it into the mole, okay? It's your kind of universal unit. So I don't know if that is helpful to you, maybe, but at least to me, if I can think about the mole like, like it's the center, it's the one that I want to get my units into, because then the reason why for this, okay, is because once you are in your central unit, in your mole, okay, once you're in the units of mole, then you can use your balance equations, okay? So, um, like your coefficients from your balanced equations. So it becomes really important to make sure you know how to convert into the mole. That way you can actually do stoichiometry problems, okay? Because that's when you use your, your balanced equations. So, all right, enough of that. Let's actually look at what the heck I mean, okay? So um, I suggest that you honestly draw out this beautiful picture that I'm going to draw you here. Oof. Apologies for my pictures. All right, so remember your mole is going to be your central unit, okay? So this is going to be the mole or the M-O-L, okay? And the other three ways that we talk about kind of our quantity of, um, of reactants or products, okay? We can talk about it in forms of volume in liters. Okay, we'll come back to this later. We can talk about it in terms of uh, atoms or molecules. Sometimes they'll use the word formula unit. Sometimes they'll say compound, um, particle. These are all words that can be described here, okay, for kind of, again, the quantity of stuff that you're dealing with. Or you can deal with mass in grams. So. The, the idea of this little graphic, okay, and it doesn't matter if you, um, okay, if you are on a quiz or a test or something, if you can just remember mole goes in the middle and all the other stuff goes around the side, it doesn't matter where you put it. You could put volume here, mass here, and atoms here. Doesn't matter, okay, because the process is still going to be the same so long as you put mole in the center, okay? So... All right, so just remember, mole goes in the middle, and these three things branch off it, okay? So um, in order to convert between mole and atom, all right, you use Avogadro's number. All right, and this is a super wonderful uh, number that you'll end up <laughs> memorizing, I'm sure. Okay, um, so one mole of anything is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, whatever, atoms, molecules, particles, formula units, you name it, okay? Um, so this number is, is one you definitely want to memorize, okay? And we'll do examples of this in a second, all right? To go from mole to mass, 
you are going to use molar mass. Okay, you're going to use molar mass. And that is just, you know, your average atomic masses here on your periodic table. You're going to use that as your molar mass. So if I had one mole of hydrogen all by itself, just H, it would weigh 1.01 grams. Okay, the molar mass of hydrogen. If I had one mole of neon, it would weigh, its mass would be 20.18 grams okay so that's how I would transfer between mole and mass okay then for volume there is a little caveat okay uh, volume is only going to be for a gas at STP standard temperature and pressure um, so that's room temperature and room pressure 1 atm uh, we'll, we'll talk about this in chapter 7 when we start talking about gases okay but in order to switch back and forth between a mole, if I had one mole of oxygen gas, the volume of that would be exactly one mole equals 22.4 liters. So no matter what gas you have, oxygen gas, nitrogen gas, carbon dioxide, who cares? If you have a mole of it, it's going to take up the space of 22.4 liters at STP, okay? Only for gases. So sometimes they might ask you a trick question here, like you'll have solid aluminum and they'll say, find the volume of it. It's like, well, I can't do it because I can't use this conversion, okay? So just watch out for trick questions. But if you can just set up this situation, you should be able to convert between anything, okay? So, um, and this tells you if you have a one-step or a two-step problem, okay? So if I had 2.1 moles of nitrogen gas at standard temperature and pressure, how many liters do I have, okay? You can just look at your little table, right? And I'm starting in moles, I need to get to liters. I wanna to get to volume, okay? So I'm going to use this ratio, one mole is 22.4 liters. Okay, so just like any old conversion, you start with what you're given, 2.1 moles of N2, set up a blank equation, okay, a blank conversion, get out of moles, get into liters, and use your appropriate numbers, okay? So one goes with mole, and 22.4 goes with liter. Okay, and then mole and mole will cancel. I get my answer in liters, which is exactly what I want. And then you just type in 2.1 times 22.4 equals 47.0. Point zero liters of nitrogen gas. Okay, easy. One step problem. I had to move from this box to this box. Okay, we'll do another one stepper. Okay, so for question two, if I have 5.2 grams of water, how many moles is that? How many moles of water is that? Okay, and if you look at your beautiful little table here, okay, I'm gonna have to cut this off. Perfect. All right, I'm starting in grams and I wanna get to moles. So I'm starting from my mass. I want to get to moles, so it's a one step. I only have to move from one box to the other. I'm going to use molar mass, okay? Start with what I know. I know I have 5.2 grams of water. Set yourself up a blank equation. Get out of grams of water. Get into moles of water. And your molar mass is just going to be two hydrogens plus an oxygen with that molar mass, okay? So 1.01 plus 1.01 plus 16. You'll end up doing water so much, you'll end up memorizing. It's 18.02 grams for every one mole of water. And grams and grams will cancel. And what do you know? You'll be in moles, which is exactly what you wanted. 5.2 divided by 18.02. And you get 0 0.29 moles of water. Okay, one more one step, and then we'll do the tricky ones. So if I had 3.8 times 10 to the 25th aluminum atoms, how many moles of aluminum do I have? Okay. And looking at your beautiful little table, I'm starting in atoms. I need to get to mole. So I'm gonna use Avogadro's number here. Okay, again, a one step problem. 3.8 times 10 to the 25th a L atoms. 
blank conversion, okay? You wanna get out of atoms, get into moles, okay? And you have this beautiful thing, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd for every one mole, all right? Now, be very careful when this happens, okay? When your Avogadro's number is on the denominator because, all right, if you don't enter it into your calculator correctly, your calculator will give you a really weird answer. All right, so your actual answer should be 3.8 times 10 to the 25th divided by Avogadro's number, and you should get the answer of 63 moles of aluminum, okay? You should get that. What some of you are going to do when you type this into your calculator, you're gonna get like 63 times 10 to the you know 49th or something, okay? And the reason why you do that is because you're not entering in your calculator correctly. So when you actually do this in your calculator, literally type 3.8 times 10 to the 25th, then you're gonna type divided by, and then actually type out parentheses, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, end your parentheses, and then press enter. Okay, it has to do with the way that your calculator is reading what you are inputting. And if you don't put parentheses in your calculator around this, it will read that little times 10 to the 23rd as if you're putting that on the numerator. And then you're gonna get something really weird like times 10 to the 49th or something, okay? Which is a red flag. If you ever get an answer that has times 10 to the 40 somethings or times 10 to the negative 40 somethings, you know you've done something wrong in your calculations, stop, go back and try and fix it, okay? But this is, to me, the easiest way to make sure that you don't screw up with these, these kind of problems, okay? All right, that's enough one step, let's actually do a two step. So now I actually have a more difficult problem, okay? 3.9 liters of oxygen gas at standard temperature and pressure is how many grams? If you look at this beautiful thing, okay? I'm starting in liters and I want to get to mass. I'm starting in volume and I need to get to mass. So volume to mass. I cannot go straight volume to mass. There is no connector between these two boxes. This is now a two-step problem. I have to go volume to mole and then mole to mass. Okay, so hopefully this visual will help, right? So we got to go two steps now. All right, Getting sick of that color, here we go. 3.9 liters of O2 at STP. Blank conversion, get out of liters, get into mole, okay? Your central unit, all right, get, get there. 22.4 liters for every one mole. Sweet, so now I'm out of liter and I'm in mole, but that's not what I want, right? I wanna get all the way to gram. So I do my second step and I'm going to get out of mole and get into grams of O2. And for that, I use my molar mass. So we figure out a table. You find oxygen. One oxygen is worth 16.00. So two oxygens, because we're talking about O2 here, right? O2 gas. I need two oxygens. So 16 plus 16 is 32. Will be 32.00 grams per mole. All right, and wrong color. Mole will cancel. All right, and then I'll plug in my calculator 3.9 divided by 22.4 times 32 equals 5.6 grams of O2 gas. Okay, two step problem. Neat. All right, we'll do one more two step and we'll call it good. So now I have 52.0 grams of hydrochloric acid and that is how many molecules, okay? Or you could have said hydrogen chloride, either one would be correct. All right, um, and if I look at my beautiful page here, I'm starting in grams, so I'm starting in mass and I want to get to molecules. So mass to molecules. Okay, again, no direct line here. So I gotta go mass to mole, mole to molecule. Two steps. 
All right, start with my given 52.0 grams of hydrogen chloride. Get out of grams of HCl and get into moles. All right, I need to use my molar mass. Chlorine's 35.45 plus 1.01, .01, so 36.46. And now I'm in moles of HCl, and I want to get to molecules. That's easy. One mole of anything is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay. I tell you what, it's a bummer when you have to find molecules because our abbreviation for molecules is nothing. We just write out molecules. You can see why I scribble it, okay? All right, so you would take 52.0 divided by 36.46 times Avogadro's number should equal uh, 8.59 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of hydrogen chloride. All right, so hopefully this helps. All right, hopefully understanding this, uh, this graphic helps a little bit more. Uh, yay, all right, good luck.